Hello everyone, this is Mike Check 95 along and I'll put you pop opity boop. <laughs> Welcome to the opener. Alrighty then. Hello everyone, this is Mike Check 95 with another Mike Check Productions Mike Check Movie Review. We are officially done with Spider-Man and Terminator. Now we can kind of shift our focus to some other smaller projects like individual films. Also slowly carry along our Jim Carrey career series that we're going to be covering this month. We'll be covering two movies this month of his very lustrous and so far oddly enough sexual-ish movie career. But this film is called Once Bitten. He plays a man who is in college who wants to lose his virginity to his girlfriend, but his girlfriend is saying no and wants to be ready whenever she is ready and that he will know. But he runs into a vampire lady at a party who needs the blood of a virgin to regain her youth. And so he gets bit by the vampire lady and then within the week of the events of the film, he has to battle and decide whether or not he wants to stay with his lovely girlfriend or be a vampire with the Countess forever. And the ratings for this film was not great. Uh, critics rate this film a 1 out of 10 and audiences rate this film a 3.9 though the box office numbers are different. The budget of this film was 3.2 million which kind of surprised me because it didn't really look like a 3.2 million dollar movie but the box office they earned back ten million dollars, so box office wise they did good. Rating wise, not so much. Moving on to the usual, the pros, cons, and comments. I only have uh, two comments here. Once this movie opens up, the soundtrack prepares you for the train wreck or the hilarious ride that you're about to get into. Depends on how you take this movie. And as we go along, you will learn whether or not I think it's a train wreck or a hilarious comedy. The other fun thing that I noticed in this film, he only has a cameo in the very beginning, but uh, I don't know the actual actor's name, but he's the candy bar kid from Friday the 13th Part 5. He makes a spot in this film by just asking for an ice cream bar. Cons. There were some things I was not 100% sure about. I guess the lover's lane of this movie is next to an oil pump. I could be wrong, but this is what I'm talking about right here. The little thing that spins around and pumps oil out of the ground. Apparently that's next to Lover's Lane, that's weird. Apparently most 80s comedy gigs for like early actors trying to make it into like the comedy scene are just based around sexual jokes or just sex movies. And so far covering Carrie's career, he's been in two very sexual and over the top films and this one had sexual themes in it so yeah window shopping in an ice cream truck. Yeah. I know they tried to do that for comedic effect, but that... Maybe I'm Just a little bit. A little bit. I can kind of go into, like, pedo territory a little bit. A little bit, A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. But, I mean, 80s, early comedy is sex humor, I guess. I don't care if this is the 80s, the 70s, or the 60s. Or this just a movie in general. I don't think there is a single actual restaurant or cafe or diner or fast food place that is going to serve you and be okay with raw uncooked beef. Can I have one of those uncooked ones? Which kind of is funny because early in the film he was asking for well done and his burger patty was like basically a hockey puck. It was a it was a burnt hockey puck. Next time he gets a burger, it's completely raw and flabby and gross and bloody. Yeah, that's that, that, again, for comedic effect, but it just, no. I kind of thought the pacing of this film, it wasn't bad. The film feels like it's one of those short, quick laugh movies, but at the same time, I feel like the pacing was going a little too fast by like a couple centimeters. But again, the movie's only an hour and a half. It seems like a quick Friday night popcorn 
movie you can watch with like a loved one or some friends and go, ha ha, funny. Definitely has one of the 80s tropes of cringy best friends. Wasn't really much of a fan of the two best friends because they just seemed more annoying than anything else. And the fact that their main focus was just to get laid while Jim Carrey's character, Mark, is kind of doing that, but he wants to get it from a specific lady. A comedy, yes, but where are the horror elements? This film is labeled as a horror comedy. I've seen horror comedies from the 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010s, and also a couple in the 2020s. I don't see any horror elements in this film at all. I just didn't see anything in this film that was scary, other than possibly the terrible acting from some people. And I would say that the ending, it did solidify an ending for this movie, but it felt very anticlimactic. Like, you figured that he's gonna go, ah, I'll kill the big baddie vampire, or vampiress countess lady, but no, he just traps himself in the room, takes his girlfriend, locked the two of them in, inside of, of a coffin, and fuck. Because he's not a virgin anymore. Brilliant writers, brilliant. Pros, there's actually quite a few pros in this film, though. The countess said in the, early in the film that being a vampire of the 20th century is rough. She had a very, very good, a very good point saying that because as like time goes on, it get like you don't really see that many people that are virgins anymore. I guess is what she was trying to say. And just in general, I think being a vampire in the 20th or the 21st century is rough, <laughs> just by just everything that goes on. Countess at least has standards. She's not gonna take a random kid off the street because the kid doesn't even know what sex is and drink its blood. The theme song for the movie, Once Bitten, was actually pretty catchy. Here's a quick little snippet. Okay, that's all I'm going to give you because the YouTube copyright laws. Another thing I thought that was really smart about this movie, um, having a vampire hidden in a very popular city like in California and Los Angeles and Hollywood, that is actually a really good smart technique that a vampire could do to get what it needs to get by in life. I really enjoyed Countess Butler, chauffeur, partner, Sebastian a lot. Ooh, rough trade. He was probably, besides Jim Carrey, he was probably, honestly, the one actor that, like, outshined everybody else just because of his little bits of comedy and lines and everything. Like, he delivered some pretty, like, under-the-water funny lines that probably wouldn't, most people wouldn't get. There's a scene in the film where he's in the like a clothing store, about to go into a dressing room, and he's doing his typical weird face things like, and classic, typical Jim Carrey comedy. Always got to look for that in Jim Carrey movies. Strangely enough, as you can see in the image behind me, Jim Carrey actually looks pretty good as a vampire. Strangely enough, it's creepy, but I like it. I am stretching out, like thoughts on this, like, just pulling at strings on this one, that this film kind of has a hidden, like, theme of, like, teens and, like, young adults discovering themselves, like, through puberty and whatnot, and, like, it kind of makes sense using, like, they're using, like, the whole uh, Mark turning into a vampire kind of theme thing as the theme hiding it, but you can still kind of see it if you pay attention and watch as the characters grow throughout time. And then my last favorite thing about this film would be the dance sequence between Robin, Mark, and Countess at the Halloween party. Very good coordination, well put together, everything worked out great. And it was actually done in a very decent amount of time, so it was fun to watch, entertaining, and quite funny all at once. Those are my thoughts on the film. Now it's time to give the two ratings of this review. There's, there is, of course, a Jim Carrey rating, this little lovely vampire face right here, Jim Carrey, and the overall rating of the film itself. Jim Carrey's um, rating in this film. Definitely a lot better in the first couple films that he's been in because he's actually the main character of this movie and he's not in an overly over-the-top sexual horrid find this film behind the black curtain of a blockbuster and go to your room and lock the door till, till 6 a.m. watching it kind of movie, but it's still early in his career. I think he's still trying to, like, find his, his niche when it comes to, like, Hollywood comedy. So, I'd say for his acting ability-wise, he was good, 
but I don't think he really hasn't found it just yet, so I'm going to say it's a 6 out of 10 when it comes to his performance. Oh, yeah. Not horrible, but not the greatest. Now, moving on to the movie rating itself. As a comedy, an 80s comedy, it's not too bad. With a lot of themes and decided uh, topics and scenes that were done in the film that didn't really age that well when it comes to current day standards. But I wasn't cringing the entire time because there was actually a pretty well cohesive and well written story hidden beneath the the, the the raunchy comedy here and there. Seeing Mark having the inner struggle of turning into a vampire slowly dealing with the spell he's under from Countess and also trying to decide whether like he wants to win his girlfriend back. So all of that meshed up in a weird, um, glued back together jack o' lantern that's been stepped on. This film would get a 6.3 out of 10 for me. Again, not a horrible movie. Would I watch it again? I mean, maybe for a, a quick Halloween flick, because this is a Halloween film, but probably not going to reach out and watch this again, because why not? Be sure to keep an eye out for our next Jim Carrey film. Be sure to keep an eye out for our next movie review in general. And of course, if you enjoyed this review and any other content before and after from this video point, like, share, subscribe, join the channel, join the madness, join our Discord, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, the works. This is Mike Check 95 wishing you a lovely evening and signing out. <laughs> In case I don't see ya. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night.